When I attended college at Indiana University of Pennsylvania in the 1970s, I had the good fortune to visit the University of Pittsburgh's campus. While in Pittsburgh, I got a chance to see the Cathedral of Learning. The Cathedral of Learning is located in the center of Pitt's campus and is the second tallest education building in the world. The tallest education building in the world is at Moscow State University. Whenever I visited Pittsburgh, I made it a point to stop by Pitt's campus just to get another look at the cathedral. The building enthralled me. Its elevation, its stonework. It was poetic to look up so high. It was an awakening. It was just as Stevens describes in Notes Toward a Supreme Fiction when he says, Perhaps there are moments of awakening, extreme, fortuitous, personal, in which we more than awaken, sit on the edge of sleep as on an elevation, and behold the academies like structures in a mist. My name is H. Songhai and I'm a high school media literacy instructor teaching in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I've titled this presentation Cathedrals of Learning on Your Desktop because I truly believe that personal start pages are like virtual cathedrals of learning. In our classroom, personal start pages like iGoogle, NetVibes, and PageFlakes are like many universities on your desktop. They're like virtual resource rooms that you can custom build according to your individual roster, your interests, your needs, and your curiosities. Each new tab or page that you add to your personal start page can function as a specialized knowledge department. Personal start pages are like master control rooms in which you can monitor, interact, collaborate, and broadcast from your desktop. Here's how we built our iGoogle Cathedral of Learning. First, we added a series of tabs to our personal start page. Home News, Google Tools, Maps, Photos, Podcasts, Sports, and Music and Entertainment. Think of these tabs as academic departments and think of the feeds you add to each tab as a course. The Home tab was meant to serve as a digital planner and advanced organizer, so we kept the date, time, weather, and the CNN World News gadgets and added Google Calendar, an email gadget, Dictionary.com, Map My Word Dictionary, Wikipedia, and two local news feeds. The students were instructed to add my blog to their home page for classroom news, announcements, and assignments. Our news tab includes news feeds from Calcutta, Egypt, Trinidad and Tobago, Canada, Singapore, and the BBC News. We also use the Internet Public Library, IPL.org, in conjunction with the iGoogle News tab. With just these few additions, we have a small sociology department. The Google Tools tab that we created serves as a virtual reading room and writing center. It houses four very powerful iGoogle applications, Google Docs, Google Reader, Google Groups, and Google Notebook. Google Docs is our online writing center. It handles the bulk of our word processing needs. Students can learn much of what they need to know about keyboarding and page layout in Google Docs. In Google Docs, students also learn how to create and save documents online and how to insert hyperlinks and share documents via email. Google Reader is our wire service for a variety of subjects. I use Google Reader to gather together all of my online subscriptions in one convenient location. In Google Reader, all the blogs to which I have subscriptions are neatly listed alphabetically in a single window. Google Reader allows me to easily check all of my students' blogs and leave comments. I don't need to have a dozen or more tabs open across my browser. All of my students have a Google Reader account. They have subscriptions to each other's blogs and they subscribe to noted bloggers from around the nation and the world. Many of our assignments are based on the current goings-on in the blogosphere. 
We use Google Groups to post daily reflections, ideas, and suggestions. It's our online graffiti wall. I use Google Notebook like I use Delicious to bookmark interesting web pages. We use our Google Maps page to calculate distances between cities and to identify national and international locations. NetVibes has a much livelier look and feel than iGoogle. Many of the feeds include color thumbnails and live radio buttons. It is easy to listen to podcasts and watch videos inside of NetVibes. The tabs are neatly stacked and labeled and quite visible and easy to click. My NetVibes tabs are similar to my iGoogle tabs. Home, news, podcasts, sports, photo and video, and music and entertainment. I also created tabs for each of my five classes. This is a convenient way for me to check student blog posts by classes. In NetVibes, I created a tab called Web 2.0 and Blogs and added the web feeds from some of the top bloggers and edtech experts on the internet. This tab is my virtual IT department. My most meaningful professional development takes place here, inside of NetVibes. Here are some other departments that I set up in NetVibes. Science, Language, Technology, Photos and Video, News. Of the three personal start pages featured today, I believe Page Flakes is the smoothest and the shiniest of them all. Thumbnails galore, radio buttons, and page gas. In Page Flakes, my home page is set up like a virtual organizer and digital planner. It looks like a cockpit. It holds my delicious bookmarks, my Twitter gadget, Wikipedia, a dictionary, Gmail, Google Research, Map Flake, and a few other useful gadgets. My Web 2.0 Blogs tab is stocked with professional bloggers and education technology experts. I really enjoy taking professional development classes here. My News tab contains local, national, and international news feeds. My Photo and Video tab houses my Flickr pics, my Jump Cut movies, my Photo Bucket files, and my SlideShare files. It's a real convenience to watch videos inside of a feed window without having to leave the entire page. Another nice feature of Page Flakes are the page casts. Page casts are user created feed pages. The pages are usually topic specific and cover a broad range of subjects. It's easy to add these page casts to your current Page Flakes roster. So now, with all of this power to gather information, to publish, and to broadcast, how do we motivate students to more than awaken, to look underfoot for solutions and answers? How do we encourage them to sit on the edge and behold these academies like structures in a mist? Instill in students that they are creating a digital archive of their academic careers. If students start archiving work beginning in middle school, by the time they reach college they will have archived over 10 years of learning. Students need to be proficient at a number of computer functions like email, username and password, saving and retrieving documents online, creating hyperlinks, social bookmarking, blogging, and file types. These are job readiness requirements that students should master if they plan to hit the ground running. There will always be a couple of students who see teacher doing it or hear teacher talking about doing it, so they do it too, and they do it well. They continue to use these tools well after the bell rings.